वसुदेवसुत कंसचाणूरमर्दनम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु प्रपन्न पारिजातायोत्रेत्रकपाणे ज्ञान मुद्रा कृष्णा गीतामृतुहे नम सर्वोपनिषदो गाव दोग्धागोपालनंदन पार्थो वत्स सुधीर्भोक्ता दुग्ध गीतामृत महत् मूक कौति वाचाल पंगु लंघयते गिरी यत्तमह वंदे परमानंदमाधव सर्वधर्माज्य मेक शरण व्रज अहम तवापेभ्यो मोक्षयिष्याशु फस्ट आफ आल वी विल समरइज वाट वी हेड डिस्कस्ड इन अवर् लास्ट गीता क्लास वी स्पोक in quite a detail about values in life so if you remember according to the western philosophy and religion there are three values truth beauty and goodness goodness i want you interact like a workshop according to hindu dharma Hindu religion, Hindu philosophy, Vedanta philosophy. There are four values. These values are called Purusharthas, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Four are there. Then we also had discussed how Taittiriya Upanishad gives a most wonderful guideline. for the entire life of a student in the form of a convocation address and we also quoted some of them like what if you remember satyam vada dharmam chara swadhyayan maha pramadah matru pitru karyabhyam na pramadah then मातृदेव भव पितृदेव भव आचार्य देव भव अतिथिदेव भव ऑलवे स्पीक दि ट्रूथ अबर्व धर्म लिव ए रईटियस् लाइफ एंड सर्व पेरेन्ट्स टीचर एंड एवरीबडी एल्स अतिथि देव भव देन नवर नेग्लेक्ट study of the scriptures what sri ram krishna used to call satsanga you know for the benefit of the devotees every devotee but especially today's extra devotees sri ram krishna's gospel you heard about it the gospel of sri ram krishna what is it called in bengali katha amrita so the entire katha amrita can be summarized in five commandments according to sri ram krishna these are the only five values in life five commandments they are commandments because if you neglect then you will suffer what are those commandments god realization is the only goal of life second commandment cultivate holy company third commandment now and then go into solitary place and call on god intimately earnestly intensely fourth always discriminate what is permanent what is impermanent last live in this world 
लाइक ए मेड सर्वेंट इन ए रिच मैंस हाउस दीज आर दी फाइव कमेंडमेंट्स दीज आर दे एकोइंग ऑफ द सेम कमेंडमेंट्स वी गेट थ्रू आउट अवर धर्मशास्त्र थ्रू आउट अवर स्क्रिप्चर्स उपनिषद्स इंक्लूडिंग भगवदगीता एंड दैट्स वॉट तैतरी उपनिषद समराइज so what do these values do to us we discussed in our last class what actually do the observance of these values do to us what benefit do they give to us first of all let me uh, summarize what are the these three values first of all dharma artha kama and moksha i also had classified not my classification it is an ancient classification values are divided into two types instrumental values and intrinsic not values value there is only one intrinsic value what are the what is an instrument an instrument is an instrument which serves somebody something else so what are the instrumental values dharma artha and kama what is the intrinsic value moksha so what is the difference between these two an instrumental value is always meant for something else an intrinsic value is meant for its own sake it doesn't lead anybody anything else for example you know uh, why do you want why did you come here if i ask you oh, we wanted to have some satsanga and why do you want to have satsanga so that our mind becomes pure and what happens if your mind becomes pure as you can say that i i will think about god and if i think about god what do i get then you have to ask i get ananda bliss and why do you want to get ananda there is no answer to it because to be happy is its own ultimate value that is what it is called intrinsic value means it doesn't lead to something else but it is itself is perfect so dharma artha and kama according to hindu dharma are three instrumental values and all these values must lead to something else what is that something else moksha that is why there is a special technical name given there in our vedanta dharma artha and kama are called abhyudaya moksha liberation that is called nishreyasa that means there is nothing more beneficial than itself okay so the question that i raised was what do these values do practice of these values they give three benefits what is it first abhyudaya means gives happiness in the world both here and hereafter the, and what is abhyudaya dharma artha and kama what does dharma do dharma gives happiness what does artha and kama do that also leads to happiness only so the practice of these values give three benefits the first benefit is it gives happiness is it possible i am asking you a question is it possible a person is adharmic unrighteous and yet he could be happy yes no it is not possible perhaps you are thinking an adharmic person has lot of money power etc that is totally different from that mental condition called happiness happiness is always a mental condition unhappiness is also a mental condition do you think that rich people do not worry so what is the difference between poor people and rich people 
a poor unrighteous person and a rich unrighteous person what is the difference between these two a poor man worries in a non air conditioned room and a rich man worries in a air conditioned room but worrying is <coughs> common to both so always we have to understand dharma means happiness adharma means unhappiness note carefully i, I did not say dharma is poverty or adharma is poverty dharma adharma have nothing to do with poverty one a person can cheat and he he can be in a very good position and in fact most of our politicians are like that a politician is another name for adharma have you ever seen a dharmic politician have you ever come across you will not come across if you come across also he won't be here for long time because the other people will see they recognize the value of this dharmic politician and say this is not a right place for you you better go to swargaloka and enjoy it <laughs> okay so what is the first result of observing values or abhyudaya dharma artha and kama what is the first value it gives happiness what is the second chitta shuddhi and chitta vaishalyata the mind becomes pure day by day by the practice of the values and the mind also becomes expanded it is called chitta shuddhi and chitta vaishalyata chitta shuddhi means what purity of the mind or heart what is purity a person always thinks in the right manner according to the scriptures he always behaves according to the scriptures he cannot think of doing any harm etc to other people what is what is vaishalyata beautiful world expansion of personality what is contraction of personality me and nothing else this is called contraction of personality me you many people the more we expand then the more we become moral in fact swami vivekananda equates dharma with expansion what is dharma translated in english language morality what did he say about morality only when a person totally identifies himself with the other can he really become dharmic i'll just dwell on this topic for a moment do you know what happens if a person is very selfish that means he is identified only with himself have you seen even in a family the husbands or the wives could be very selfish even the best things in the family must be enjoyed only by one person i it was my misfortune or good fortune to witness such a person when uh, i have seen a few number not many there was a husband he had eight children he was a teacher school teacher and when he is, is a bengali gentleman and whenever fish is cooked in his house the largest part of that curry the best parts of that curry he would eat and after he had filled his stomach then wife children others could eat but you know the divine vengeance will come his daughter had become a nun in sharda mat <laughs> what a wonderful thing so don't think that i will be selfish my children also will become monks in the ram krishna or sharda order it's good if you can think like that it's good so the more, less selfish we are the more we our heart expands morality means identification with everything else 
This is what is called unselfishness. Selfishness means just the opposite. So, Chitta Shuddhi, mind becomes pure and mind acquires, expands the personality, identifies with a larger whole. That is the second benefit. What is the third benefit? Always practice of these dharma, artha and kama, these values, it leads to the fourth. What is that fourth? Moksha. It leads to liberation. Gradually it leads to liberation. So this is what is said here. Dharma leads to ananda, nisvarthata. That means selflessness or unselfishness, lessening of the egotism. What is egotism? Identification is called egotism. If I identify only with my body, then I am terribly selfish. If I identify only with my family, I am less selfish, but still selfish. But if I identify myself with my whole village, it is much better. If I identify myself with my whole state, it is still better. If I identify myself with my whole country, it is even better. But the best is to identify oneself with the entire world. That is what is said, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. The entire earth becomes my own family. Kutumbakam means what? My family. My family. The whole world is my family. Not only this world. According to Hindu Dharma, we should not think only this, our planet earth. Everything else including what we call, according to Hindu Puranas, there are 14 worlds are there. Chaturdasha, Bhavanani, or even three. What are those three? This earth, upper world, and the lower world, also called Swarga and Naraka. So, one identifies oneself with the entire world. Why? What happens when a person identifies himself or herself with the entire world? He becomes God. Because who is it that is identified with the entire world? Can you tell me? Is God selfish? The whole world is his creation. Everybody is his child. Is it not? So when a person identifies with the entire world, what is he ultimately identifying himself with? God, with God. That means he becomes God. Or, I will put it this way, when a person becomes God, identifies himself with God, then he becomes identified with the entire world. And that is what the values lead. Dharma leads to happiness. Unselfishness leads to lessening of the egotism. Satya or Shraddha leads to Moksha. Satya means what? Truthfulness. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, those who read Kathamrita, Sri Ramakrishna used to say about them. Do you know what, the, what he used to say? If in this Kali Yuga, truthfulness is the greatest austerity. One who is truthful attains truth, which is God. And Truthfulness and Shraddha, they are saying, Shraddha possessed Nachiketa. As a result, what happened? He also realized God. <coughs> realization God means what? Becoming one with God. You see, realization God means becoming one with God. <coughs> now, let us conclude. So, why do wars take place in the world? We are talking about the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And what is the title? Arjuna Vishada Yoga. I am sure some of you have read Bhagavad Gita. At least I have taken several classes on Bhagavad Gita in Manchester. I hope some of you would remember them. Arjuna came there to fight wars. Now what 
war means don't think only korean war vietnam war or first world war second world war there are extreme examples what about the wars that are taking place between husband and wife between brothers and brothers between sisters and sisters between families and families between villages and villages are not wars taking place war means conflict conflict is the result of moha delusion that is the word technical word used in the bhagavad gita moha what is moha delusion what is delusion when a person is deluded what happens to him he develops an understanding where he feels righteousness is unrighteousness and unrighteousness is righteousness dharme adharma buddhi adharme dharma buddhi ar punye pap buddhi pape punya buddhi punye pap buddhi means in virtuous action he feels it is unvirtuous action and a unvirtuous action he thinks that is most virtuous action simple example if a person has to share what he has with other person what is it called in sanskrit language you have to share what you have with somebody do you know what is it, what it is called you know that dana what is dana sharing what one has with others there are people why should i share this is my hard earned money or whatever i would not like to share it with anybody and that thinking is the result of what moha and he thinks if anybody is very unselfish he thinks i am the cleverest person on earth all these are fools they are distributing away their property i have to tell you a nice story you know in a town is a story but beautiful moral story in a town there was a rich man he was extraordinarily miserly he would not let even a single penny to anybody even by mistake not only that he would not even spend for himself also let alone sharing it with others he would not even enjoy it himself now everybody knew everybody hated you see in this world do you know who is the most hated person do you know who is the most hated person in this world the, the more selfish a person the more he is also hated by everybody including the family members so in that uh, town everybody hated him nobody wants to even to look at his face now there was a very famous sadhu one day suddenly he came to him secretly at night and he told him hey look here what are you doing with all your property you give it to me i will make it 100 times fruitful you, if you give me your money i will make it 100 times more and somehow that uh, miserly fellow he trusted because this is a very uh, famous sadhu so after 10 uh, days i will i will uh, give you 100 times more of this and the miser trusted him gave him almost all that he had and he was waiting for 100 fold return on his and uh, one day passed two day passed seventh day passed eighth day passed and the monk was staying with him only but day time he used to go and come back at night time return at night time so the tenth day has come and there was no sign of that sadhu giving anything back 
then the householder caught him miser miserly fellow caught him and said sir you you promised and you didn't give me anything he said what do you mean you come how much i am you are getting because of what i have done and he took him there was a huge monastery which is in the habit of feeding thousands of poor people that was their special mission and this monk gave all the money to that monastery and because of that they invited all the possible people and feeding them right and left so the poor man started beating his heart and said what is this i gave you all that money i became bhikari ho gaya he said you foolish fellow you don't understand so many wonderful results are awaiting you in swargaloka because your money has been spent here feeding the sadhus and poor people it is that result is accumulating after your death you will be the happiest person for a long long time is it a fact or not if you do dana who gets the benefit the person who receives or you you all know that ha huh? bhagwane dai obhagai dai ha it you see we know that our scriptures teach us and we also tell the same thing but we don't practice it unfortunately that is the only problem it is true whatever we spend <coughs> in the service of other people we get a hundred fold if you do dana do you think that it goes in waste do you know why because god is there he is keeping accounts he is the biggest insurance company in the whole universe do you know that another name for god interloka insurance company <laughs> so you you give so much of dana he is keeping account this person has paid so much of premium and after your death you will go and then you will get even in this world you get benefit we know how you observe the baby is born suppose somebody is born to bill gates how how is he born into bill gates do you think just like that accident or this person has done something great in the previous birth or do you say previous ha huh? yes done some or without that just accidentally it happened do you believe in it no. if you do believe in accidents then you are not a hindu you are not even a religious person yeah okay what are we talking about when a person becomes unselfish it is lessening of the egotism now tell me what is spiritual life you do sadhana you do japa you do meditation you study scriptures you practice all the five commandments of the ram krishna tell me what do you get what happens as a result of practicing these five commandments you progress in spiritual life that means what what is progress in spiritual life we approach nearer to god until we become one with god i'll put it a little bit funnily you know the huge fire going on bone fire and a person is approaching do you know what happens as the person is coming nearer and nearer to the fire do you know what happens he gets more and more heat and then he approaches so near what does he become he becomes fire he he enters into the fire he becomes fire and he also acquires the capacity to burn anything that approaches because he has become fire god is like fire so when we approach god we do not remain separate we also become absorbed into god we become god brahma vid brahma eva bhavati so we are talking about why do wars take place 
because of war means what conflict with the other person i want to kill that person i want to destroy that person i alone want to survive that is called war whether it, it is between two individuals two animals two insects it's all selfishness me and wars what are the causes of wars only one what is it do you know what is the cause of war delusion moha what is moha just now we discussed what is moha dharme what is righteousness is considered as unrighteousness and what is unrighteousness is considered as righteousness but they call it you know worldly wisdom another name for it is worldly wisdom hey boka ho bhi kya na boka boka means what foolishness but sir ram krishna used this word boka me in two ways are the most intelligent worldly wise persons are the wise persons or other wise persons <laughs> according to sir ram krishna otherwise you know in this world there are only two types of people wise and otherwise <laughs> yeah so according to worldly pers- wisdom worldly people are wise people who are most selfish who without caring for what happens to other people ride over others for their selfish purposes do you know what is the result of that they will be born more and more in this samsara and they suffer samsara is another name for suffering whereas according to sri ramakrishna the person who is wise really wise he is a person who approaches fast towards god so from a worldly pr- perspective every spiritual person is a boka from a spiritual perspective every worldly person is a boka boka what is that boka or whatever okay so wars are the results of moha delusion what is delusion dharma adharma and adharma dharma now let us come back to the bhagavad gita what happens <coughs> you know the background arjuna as the commander in chief of the pandavas approached the battlefield called dharmakshetra and he requests or he commands sri krishna you take me in between the two armies so that i can have a perspective so that i would be able to fight in a better way and sri krishna takes him there and then arjuna saw he saw people whom he loved and who also loved them bhishma drona and so many of his relatives who really loved them arjuna was not a fool he knew who really loved them he also knew who pretended to love to be loving but he was overcome by moha what is the moha how am i to kill these people who are my own people then he gives certain reasonings and the reasonings are what is the point of achieving even victory what is the point without whom we can never enjoy and really a most important psychological point is given here the point is can you enjoy anything alone if you are alone can you enjoy if there is nobody to share what you have can you enjoy simple example i'll give you can a mother enjoy anything without sharing with her children can any parent i give the example of mother because mother's love is far superior even to even father's love first comes mother's love then comes father's love then comes anybody else's love so is it possible to enjoy even selfish people cannot enjoy there is a psychological law if you want to enjoy then you need some people to share with you yeah 
that's very important la so arjuna is telling if we kill all these people then how are we for whose sake are we going to get this kingdom etc now i will read a little bit of the translations along with the sanskrit so you will have a little bit idea arjuna vacha arjuna said drishtve mam swajanam krishna yuyutsum samupasthitam sidanti mama gatrane mukhancha parisushyati vepadhuscha sharire me roma harshascha jayate gandevam samsate hastat tvakchaiva paridahyate nacha shakno myavasthatum bhramati vacha me manaha nakaamshe vijayam krishna nacha rajyam sukhani cha kim no rajye na govinda kim bhogair jeevite nava let me translate seeing my kith and kin arrayed in battle o krishna i feel extremely tired and my mouth dries up i am horrified and i tremble there is horripilation due to fear gandiva my bow drops from my hand and my skin is drying up i see bad omens i have no desire for victory nor do i desire any kingdom i do not wish any worldly pleasure either those for whom we wish to have kingdom and prosperity they themselves have come here to shed their lives in battle teachers fathers children grandparents uncles fathers in law brothers in law and also other closer relatives then he also says well i do not like to kill them even if they kill me in battle or even if i get the whole world not even for the sake of heaven and here is something very wonderful is telling what is the consequences of war when wars take place who really gains sometimes it appears one party which wins really gains something take the example of any country whether it is uk or germany or america or any country you will see temporarily they may be elated they may become very enthusiastic but in the long run the consequences of war they take a heavy toll upon them how do i know how do we know this is the result what is the wars due to most of the time because of unrighteousness unrighteousness is because of selfishness and selfishness always degrades a person degrades a nation degrades everybody and the result is unhappiness unhappiness could be both physical as well as mental now i don't know how many of you really know mental sickness is increasing terribly and even physically violence is growing so much every day practically you get news somebody or other is killing people here and there don't you get the news is it a pleasant news would you like to be in that condition you know in a shopping malls in railway stations in airports etc so many things are happening and we are all frightened because when our very existence is threatened where do you get peace of mind so this is what is happening physically externally what about mentally is mental sickness mental illness is it increasing or decreasing even doctors are given training nowadays you know what is called physicians they are given training in some sort of psychological knowledge because many of the illnesses sickness that come is the result of is it because of physical deficiency or could it be the result of mental strain, mental strain stress weakness etc which is more influential or powerful what do you think ah so you see hinduism 
advocates Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, it advocates a very important law. And this is advocated not only in Hinduism, but also in every religion. This is saying they don't to specify it that way. As you sow, so you reap. What is this? Law of karma. And the law of karma, if we do anything wrong to others, it comes back to us, either in an individual way or in a national way. If a nation does some unrighteousness, it will come back. So, Arjuna, he understood the consequences of all. That is why wisdom had come. But it has come, unfortunately it is wisdom, no doubt, like our wisdom tooth. Usually when we are old, the wisdom tooth comes. And then you can't bear that wisdom. So you pay heavily to the dentist to get rid of wisdom tooth. Yeah, after some time you get rid of non-wisdom tooth also. That is what is called Vedanta. <laughs> Understand? Vedanta means <coughs> no danta. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Arjuna, he had seen in front of him people who really loved, but now because of some circumstances, they are forced to fight with each other. This is a very peculiar thing. It happened in the First World War. It had happened in the Second World War too. Forcefully, some countries had to take this side or the other side. And very strangely, some countries changed their party midway. Yeah, this is the story we see. Today, friends, tomorrow, enemies fight to death. <coughs> like tennis match. You know, marriage is compared to a tennis match. Do you know that? Marriage is compared to a tennis match. Do you know why? You don't know? Well, how does tennis match start? Love. Afterwards, fight like? Yeah. Right. So, Arjuna, he was giving a profound conclusion. What is the conclusion? Whenever wars take place, something very destructive take place besides the killing of other people. Do you know what it is? Values. Just now we, dis we discussed about values. What happens? Values are destroyed. How are values destroyed? Is it possible to destroy values? Not really. But still, they can be hampered, they can be obstructed, anything can happen. Do you know how it happens? Because how are values propagated? That is an important question. I will come to that and then we will uh, continue with this. First of all, we discussed in our last classes also, I want to discuss now how values are propagated. We discussed what are values. We discussed the importance of values. We discussed the result of values. But how are values propagated? How does a man get values? From where does he get? We get from three important sources. We get values from three important sources. First source is family. Second source is our school or teachers most important. Third source is society. You know, we are people of family. We are also, we get our training from our teachers or school and we also interact our whole life from the society. So whatever the so whole society is doing, now for simple example is, you, you, most of you have dressed. Have you noticed, especially Bengali people, when you attend a wedding or some religious ceremony, do you dress like this? How do you dress? You know, long kurta, a, what is called dhoti, particular way of dressing is there? 
if you go to durga puja and other things you will see all that <coughs> mostly but now things have changed you dress in this way could you have imagined dressing in this way 100 years back you could but now you dress that way how did you happen how did this change happen because of what because of family because of school because of society that's what happens values good or bad are mostly propagated but one point from hinduism's view is to be emphasized i will not go into the details because we already had discussed it the debate about nature or nurture you understand what is nature nature means our own swabhava samskara what is nurture whatever uh, the parents the family the school the society how it influences us that is called nurture 99% of our personality comes because of our own swabhava nature only 1% it can help us or hinder us society because we see people in spite of so many obstructions they become very uh, spiritual people and we also see in spite of so many things so much so good family good society people also become very wicked people you know the example ravana sura's family his family was one of the greatest spiritual families and yet he became a demon how did he become because of nurture or because of nature because of nature kumbhakarna because of nature but vibhishan also because of nature so we get a little bit we are going to discuss about it first of all family values to be passed on from parents role of parents in the lives of children <coughs> for every child home is the very first to school for every child home is the very first school a child acquires often unconsciously the personality traits of his or her parents and shapes its personality what one gets or absorbs from one's elders parents and domestic settings largely makes or mars the personality of a person that is why the taitriya upanishad exhorts let your mother be god let your father be god etc second to be truly helpful to a child in his growing years a parent should be well equipped for it he or she means father or mother should be aware of his or her responsibilities and be ever willing to discharge it to do this effectively parents will have to evolve their own training program if parents are not themselves living the life of value then they cannot pass it on and sir ramakrishna gives a beautiful example you know the gospel of sir ramakrishna is a encyclopedia of dharma shastra while discussing bhagavad gita at the end of every chapter we noticed iti upanishadsu brahma vidyayam yoga shastre it is upanishad it is brahma vidya it is also yoga shastra so sir ram krishna's gospel <coughs> is upanishad it is a brahma vidya it is also a dharma shastra there's lots of answers how one should mould one life one's life according to one situation simple example you know once m asks sir ram krishna what if one's wife obstructs one spiritual practice <coughs> instantaneously what comes the answer what is that such a person is called avidya stri it could be avidya husband also you give give that person up but she threatens to commit suicide let her commit suicide because for the sake of god you can neglect such a person not otherwise for the sake of god anything can be given up guru can be given up brothers can be given up 
parents can be given up teachers can be given up examples are there pralada gave up for the sake of god what did he give up parents. not parents father bali bali chakravarti what did he give up is guru he said what you, the advice you gave me is worthless advice here is god he comes to me he wants me and you are advising me not to go to him what about gopis what did they give up what did they give up their husbands instruction don't go to krishna that means what not don't go to krishna don't go to god what about vibhishana what did he give up you know his elder brother's command, commandment he said no you are not going to god you are also not allowing me to go to god i won't listen to you so these are there are so many other examples are there our scriptures provide this one this is what gospel is telling sir ram krishna is telling through vivid examples for the sake of god anything father mother wife husband children relatives anything everything can be given up but be careful it is only for the sake of god let me put it this way because when you use the word god misunderstanding can come for the sake of becoming pure every impurity could be should be given up for the sake of becoming unselfish any selfishness can be given up that is what spirituality really means sri ram krishna's telling example is there very simple but very profound it is in this connection what is the connection the parents must live the lead the life themselves otherwise they cannot be role models to their children i will dwell upon it a moment i will first let me give that example here is this example there was a village physician kaviraj one day from a distance a patient came to him and the kaviraj examined him and then he told him okay uh, you come tomorrow i will give you what is the medicine and the patient went away another man was observing this so next day from a long distance the patient came back again and the physician told him look don't eat molasses you know gur don't eat gur you will be absolutely fine so the patient went away the other person who was observing all this he got hold of this kavira and a hey, look this man had to come from a long distance and why did you Uh, give him the trouble that yesterday he had to go to that place again today he had to come back he could have to given this advice yesterday i don't know how many of you remember that story you know then the physician told hey yesterday hey my room was full of jars of gur yesterday had i given that advice because he was observing then he would say sir this fellow himself eats a lot of gur and he is giving me advice not to but yesterday i removed all those things only shifted from the front room to the from the consulting room to the <laughs> green room that's all <laughs> but he he was right what is this teaching of sir ramkrishna what does sir ramkrishna want to convey through this example do you know what he wants to convey first you practice and then you are authorized your words become power, uh, effective only if you practice this is what sri ram krishna used to say nobody can become a preacher unless one gets commandment from god and who do you think gets commandment from god who do you think gets only a person who is practicing what he is teaching what he wants to teach only he will get god at that authority only a great scientist like einstein if he says something about science 
it's absolute authority yeah <clears throat> i will tell you a funny story about this authority it's very interesting story there was a king and there was a uh, his he had a minister who was a brahmin and it was the custom every day the king sits in his what is called meeting sabha we call it at about 9 o'clock in the morning and they discuss important points with his ministers etc so one day this minister who was a brahmin remember that word he was a brahmin he was not coming he did not come at 9 o'clock so the king was getting impatient he sent his servant uh, ask him to come and then the man came he is uh, busy he will come very soon very soon so half an hour passed one hour passed till he is not coming so the king himself became impatient he went to the minister's house found him engaged in what you call sandhya vandana so the king got very angry and but he had respect for the prime minister so he asked him uh, you did not come in time what are you busy with then the minister explained today because of certain reasons i could not perform my sandhya vandana evening you know what is called uh, uh, repetition of gayatri mantra etc morning and even dawn and dusk we are supposed to do so only now i got time so i have been doing it now the king became very curious and said what do you do during sandhya vandana then the brahmin said we have been initiated into gayatri mantra we are supposed to repeat the gayatri mantra then the king said uh, can you give me that gayatri mantra then the brahmin said no sir i am not authorized to give only authorized persons could give i am not authorized to give the king said what is this nonsense you are talking anybody everybody is anybody is authorized anybody can give it you know the gayatri mantra you all that you need to do is to tell me and the minister said no sir there are certain rules regulations only certain persons could give this gayatri mantra and i cannot give i because i am not authorized the king got very angry and said you are bluffing you are telling a lie just because you don't want to give me then the minister said no if i if i am authorized i could give you but i am not authorized you are not authorized to take it i am not authorized to give the king was getting very angry the brahmin understood the pre, the minister understood this man will not understand unless some practical demonstration is given so he pretended to be very angry and you know the king is always accompanied by some bodyguards he turned to the bodyguards and said this fellow is talking irrelevantly arrest him of course the bodyguards of the king they would not do that why would they do that and the king got very angry and said how dare you ask my servants to arrest me he turned to them and said, arrest this fellow immediately they arrested them <laughs> then the minister laughed and said have you understood king i uttered exactly the same words arrest him but they didn't listen to me but they obeyed you instantaneously why because you have the authority that is what is called authority this is what sri ram krishna was telling anybody can talk but it won't be effective at all and that authority comes only by personal practice if a person doesn't practice he wants to tell to somebody else it is not going to be effective that's what sri ram krishna wants to illustrate through that story of this physician telling to his patient at first let me hide all those things that means he will be convinced the next day oh there is no good here i won't be convinced but next day i still remember yesterday his room was full of No, no. The point you have to understand. What is the point? Point is we have to practice ourselves. What is the point now? In in this context, unless the parents themselves practice, their saying you practice is not going to help. There is a one of our Swami told a very funny story. You know, there is a family. The father always telling to his son. 
always speak truth satyam vada be careful pronounce it properly don't say satyam vada vada means <laughs> finish so the child was okay okay dad okay dad so one day what happened the boys uh, teacher he wants to wanted to borrow some money so he was coming and the boy sa and went informed the father my teacher is coming very happily to, to you and the father understood this fellow <coughs> visiting my home only for one purpose what is that borrow some money, money. <coughs> so he told his son go and tell your teacher i am not at home so when the teacher came the boy and cheerful and said my father asked me to tell you <laughs> <laughs> he he is not at home <coughs> and the teacher understood and then he went away what is the point here now there is a conflict oh my father says speak truth but not necessarily because my father himself is behaving like this so if it is convenient you speak the truth if it is not inconvenient convenient then you do not need to speak the truth you can tell the lie and which one would be more effective this is unless the parents are like that look at sri ramakrishna's life his father was an embodiment of truthfulness what about his grandparents we don't know much about his grandparents but we assume that his grandparents also must be extraordinarily truthful and sri ramakrishna himself was highly truthful he never tolerated anybody saying anything now whoever comes to sri ram krishna they understand even the great swami vekananda when he found some conflicting types of behavior in sri ram krishna he came to the conclusion ram there is something mentally wrong with sri ram krishna but at the same time it make made him very thoughtful and said he may be monomaniac but he means what he says Swami Vekaranda was hundred percent convinced of that, and even today, every Swami from the Ram Krishna order, he will only tell, <coughs> speak the truth, practice the truth. If you don't practice the truth, then you will never reach God. Because what is another name for God? Truth. Truth is another name for God. Sat. The name of God, according to Hinduism, Sat. Chit. and ananda sat means what satya the word satya stems from the word sat satsanga goodness satsanga means sat means good sat means truth truth speaking ultimately leads to truth seeking that is the truth so parents must be role models since the childhood training goes a long way in shaping a child's personality parents should realize that whatever they say whatever they do and how they think leaves a lasting impression on a, on a child's mind so parents are the primary source of the personality development of any child learning by imitation next point we discuss is how do we get values how do we learn Do you know how we learn? How how does a child learn? Primarily, what is the source of his learning? See, simple example. How does a child learn language? See, all of you are most of you are Indian parents. You came from India. Your English accent, but you come here and you send your children to. a local school did, did you not immediately their accent so much of difference is there have you noticed mm-hmm. and where from did they learn it because you yourself may not do that because they know the children are like sponges you know they just absorb is only an example not only in the way how we sit how we talk and what we do how the way we think everything is imitated by the child how much of responsibility the parents have and that is what arjuna is telling 
that if the families are destroyed in war, when the families are destroyed, then the values, values are destroyed. Is it correct? No. Values are not destroyed. But the propagation of the values, that method, that instrument is destroyed. Values will always be there. Then there is a beautiful Sanskrit verse which says, one fourth of knowledge is acquired from the teacher, one fourth from one's own intellect, one fourth from classmates, and the remaining quarter from experience. You see, whatever we learn, learn from four sources. First of all, one fourth is learned from the teacher. Teacher means parents, teacher, society, school, college, everything. One fourth is learned from others other students. Simple example is, if 90% of the or 99% of the other students are dressing in a particular way, how do you think one child would dress? Otherwise, the child feels very odd, very odd. He is also bullied. He or she is also bullied. It's very common. And one-fourth he learns from, by himself, by his intellect. How many? One from the teacher, one from the classmates, one by his intellect. What is remaining? One fourth. That one fourth he learns by experience. So beautiful saying, that is why it should be there. What is the most important value any parent can impart to his child? Do you know what it is? Most important, integration of personality. It is a subject by itself. I won't go into it today. But disintegration of personality means insanity. Integration of personality means there is something which holds the person. He knows what is his goal. He knows what, what is the way. And he sticks to it. And he derives some benefit from it. This is called integration of personality. The opposite is Disintegration. Disintegration is equivalent to mental imbalance. Mental imbalance. Have you noticed one of the wheels of your car is punctured? What happens? Your car goes out of control. One chair of the table is short. What happens? It is not steady. This is what is called integration of personality. There is another factor. These are all corroborated now by psychological studies all over the world. Emotional stability. You know, we are all emotional creatures. But if our parents themselves are emotionally unstable, and most divorces are because of emotional instability, most. The issues are not too big. Issues are only very small, but they are blown out of all proportion. And then emotional instability comes. What do the parents need to teach to their children? Do you know what is the most? Integration of personality and emotional stability. And if the parents themselves are not stable emotionally, how do you think that their children will learn? That is most important. Then, of course, spiritual and cultural training, spiritual. This happens so beautifully. I dwell just a moment upon this. Spiritual and cultural training, especially spiritual training. You know, Hindu household, normally, if you go back to India, here also some households. Early morning, you, have, you go, there is a small photo of Thakur. In a small room or niche or on a table, you go there, you bow down and you light the lamp, you show incense stick, you offer something there, and you bow down, pray to God, and come. It's a wonderful habit. And if you do it, it's a likelihood, your children also are likely to do it. Later on, what happens is not your responsibility. As a parent, your responsibility is until they grow up to a certain age. After that, you can only give advice, but that's a very important period from the birth until they grow up. A lot of our personality depends upon it. So here is a 
ब्यूटिफुल राइट बै डोराती ला नोलटे चिलड्रन लैंड वाट दे लिव इफ ई थिंक सम आफ यू आर टीचर्स एंड यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड इट आर यू आर गोइंग टू हियर इट राइट नाउ इफ चिलड्रन लिव विथ क्रिटिसिजम दे लैंड टू कंडेम इफ चिलड्रन लिव विथ हॉस्टिलिटी दे लैंड टू फाइट इफ चिलड्रन लिव विथ रेडिकोल दे लैंड टू बी शाई If children live with shame, they learn to feel guilty. If children live with encouragement, they learn confidence. If children live with tolerance, they learn to be patient. If children live with praise, they learn to appreciate. If children live with acceptance, they learn to love. If children live with approval, they learn to like themselves. If children live with honesty, they learn truthfulness. If children live with security, they learn to have faith in themselves and others if children live with friendliness they learn the world is a nice place in which to live is from the internet so you can just google it and if the children learn is very very important thing now what happened arjuna expressed what did he say that in this if this war takes place we are sure to kill and to be killed and many people who are our beloved people who love us whom we love they will be destroyed and as a result of war nobody gains everybody loses both parties lose and families will be destroyed how are families destroyed because the best blood goes as a sacrifice in wars the best youth men will die when men are not there then women become corrupt when women become corrupt there would be nobody to carry on family values when family values are not carried on children do not learn if children do not learn they become extremely unstable disintegrated unhappy and a society where most of the people are unstable emotionally and they have no spiritual and cultural background and they are most unhappy people depressed people then such a society is another name for hell these are the consequences of war so arjuna thought he was very wise so he gave up his resolution to fight and he dropped his bow and arrows and he just sat down न योत्से गोविंद मुक्त तूष्णी बभुवा हि जस्ट सैड सैलेंट इन ए मोस्ट डिप्रेस्ड मैनर एंड दट इज वै द फस्ट चाप्टर ऑफ दि भगवदगीता इज वेरी एप्टली टाइटल एज अर्जुन विषाद योग न वाट हैपन इट स्टील कंटिन्ूस दिसटुएशन फॉर ए फ्यू वर्सेस इन दि सैकंड चाप्टर वील टेक अप इन अवर नेक्स्ट क्लास बट दि होल पॉइंट इज was arjuna right or wrong he was right but he was wrong he was right as far as his conclusions are drawn he was wrong because he is applying this conclusion at a wrong place at the wrong time and for a wrong reason even the most wonderful reasons if they are not taken into consideration according to time place and situation they can lead to diametrically opposite result so how bhagwan krishna came to the rescue and as i mentioned each one of us is an arjuna each one of us have to face our own battles in every day to day life both within our own minds with our families with the society and there is nothing to be despaired about if we are sincere then god who is sitting in the hearts of each one of us he can also help us this is the message of the first chapter and i think in the uh, 15 to 14 days later we will have again we will resume the second chapter and next to saturday we will be having the class on great master ओम वसुदेवसुतम देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम 
ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು